Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and this is question number two from the International A Level Pure Mathematics for P4 June 2021 exam. And this question here is all about volumes of revolution. However, there's a little twist in this question, which um, I haven't really seen before, but it's not too much of a big deal. It says figure one shows this a sketch of part of the curve with equation y equals nine over. 2x minus 3 in brackets to the power of 1.25, which is the power of 5 over 4. Um, x is greater than 3 over 2. Of course, x can't equal 3 over 2 because this will be undefined. You'll have a zero denominator. Um, that would be an asymptote, but they've only had whatever. This is only defined for x greater than 3 over 2. Anyway, it says a finite region R shown shaded in the figure is bounded by the curve. The line with the equation y equals 9. Okay, and the line with the equation x equals 6. The curve y equals 9 and x equals 6 bound, bounds this region R. Now, this region R is to be rotated around the x-axis 2 pi radians, 360 degrees, one whole revolution around the x-axis to form a solid of revolution. Find by algebraic integration the exact volume of the solid generated. Okay, so we need to find the volume of the solid generated when this whole region is wrapped around the x-axis okay it's rotated and one revolution around the x-axis now that's a question which requires us uh, to know how to find the volume of revolution of a shape but here there's a slight twist because normally it's the area between the curve and the x-axis that we rotate okay so it would be the area let me just uh, put this between, you could say, is that not straight? Okay. It would normally be the area between this, um, in this section here that's rotated. Normally it's this area that is a shaded region, and that's what's rotated around the x-axis. And when you rotate that around the x-axis, you get some sort of a trumpet shape here, because it's like starting off big here. It will be like some, some sort of shape you'll get like this. Say that's the x-axis. And you rotate it around it and you'll get some sort of shape that looks like, like this. Okay, that's the shape you'd get. You'd get like a, a, a solid that's going like that. Okay, it would be a solid shape going like that. But what they're looking for now is not this part, but the top part. So it's like, if you think about it, you complete a whole cylinder. It's like this is the, this is the whole cylinder. And this part would also be... A cylinder so it'll be something like this okay so we would be looking here for this area this volume if you can kind of imagine the volume on the outside between the cylinder and this shape that's the volume that they're looking for here because it's this region that's going to be rotated round okay so we have to do something slightly different um, than normal okay but in either case the first step for us would be to find the x value over here of the point where we need, where we need to we need to find the volume of the cylinder formed when this is rotated so we need to know this length also I need to know this to put in the limits when I find the volume of the sh the you know this shape when it's rota rotated around the x axis so in either case I need to find the value of x here so I'll do that first I'll find what the value of x is now x over here is the x coordinate of this point okay this is the x coordinate of this point which we call x and when x is um, this value here, y is equal to 9. And that's where the curve, that's a point on this curve, right? So when y equals 9, we can find what x is. So when y equals 9, we can substitute 9 into here to find the value of x. So 9 is equal to 9 over 2x minus 3 to the power of, I'll write it as 5 over 4. And I prefer to write that as a fraction. So if I uh, divide both sides by 9, I'll get 1 and 1. And if I multiply both sides by 2x minus 3 to the power of 5 over 4, I'll have 2x minus 3 to the power of 5 over 4 equals 9. Now I want to, uh, sorry, equals 1, not 9. I've cancelled that 9. Equals 1. And now I can, uh, you know, find the solution to this. Now, if if you want to remove an index you can multi you can raise the power so i can raise 
all of this to the power of the reciprocal of the index. So if I raise this to the power of 4 over 5, that will give you to the power of 1. But what I do to one side, I must do to the other, so I must also raise to the power of 4 over 5. So this is 2x minus 3 equals, and this basically means the fifth root of 1 to the power of 4. Now, 1 raised to any power is going to give you 1. The fifth root of 1 is 1, and 1 to the power of 4 is 1. Okay, so you end up with 2x minus 3 equals 1. So 2x equals 4. 2x equals 1 plus 3, which is 4. Therefore, x equals 2. So that is this point here. This is x equals 2. Okay, so now I'm going to kind of illustrate to you um, how this kind of works now to find the volume of this um, this revolution. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. So let's take a look at this little illustration here um, as if we are um, taking this shaded area and we are wrapping it around the, the x-axis, you know, one where we are rotating around the x-axis through 360 degrees or one revolution, two pi. So basically this is what we're this is what it means by the volume of revolution of a shape. You take that shaded area and you make it into a three-dimensional shape by rotating the whole of that area around the x-axis until you've gone through one whole revolution. And that is the volume of the shape formed. Okay, now, um, so let's go back to our diagram here. So it's as if we're taking, um, we want to find the volume of this shaded area wrapped around the whole of the x-axis. So what I'm going to do first, I'm going to imagine that we're just wrapping the whole of this rectangle around the x-axis. Remember here, this is 2, and this is 6, so that length is 4, and from here to here is 9. Okay, now if we wrap the whole of this rectangle around the x-axis, you'll end up with a cylinder. Just imagine you just go all the way around. Now what I've done here is just to make it a bit clearer. I've just um, put this over here, just to make it a bit clearer. So remember this was a 2 here, and that's 6 here, so that's 4. Okay, so if you were to wrap this thing around the x-axis, you would end up with getting the whole thing, from, I'm talking about from, from here, this, this rectangle, you'd end up with this, like a cylinder shape. Okay, it would be like a cylinder going all the way around. All the way around. Like that. Okay, so that would be a cylinder. All right, and basically, um, when we've done that, we can take away the volume of this area when it's rotated around the x-axis and you'll be left with the shaded area, you know, the volume of the shaded part around the x-axis. Okay, so the area of this, or the volume of this whole cylinder, now a cylinder, remember, if we look at it like this, okay, we've got a cylinder, this is the radius, this is the height, you can say, of the cylinder, and the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared h. So in this case, r is this length here, which is 9, and the h is between 2 and 6, which is 4. So the volume of the cylinder would be given by pi times r squared, which is 9 squared, times h, which is 4. That's the volume of the whole of the thing. Now we're going to take away from it the area or the volume of this, this part here when it's rotated around the x-axis. So I'm going to... Um, show you another little illustration to show how that happens. Okay, so now, um, just imagine we take one little thin strip of this um, area that we're rotating around the x-axis. Concentrate one small little thin strip, so small, all right, so that the basically the curve shape is just so thin that it's like a, a little rectangle. And when we rotate that around the x-axis, it will look something like this. Okay, it'll look something like that. So it rotates around the x-axis. It looks something like this. It becomes a cylinder. So this rectangle rotated becomes a cylinder, as we saw before. Now, for this cylinder, the radius of this cylinder is the y value of that point there. The y value of the point there. So it's that y value there. And the thickness of the cylinder, okay, the thickness of the cylinder is basically so thin that we call it dx. It's just a small tiny part of x. So the volume of the cylinder would be pi 
times r squared times h. So pi times, now this r here, okay, is the y value. So it's pi times y squared times dx. This little thin part is dx. And we want to find the volume of all of these tiny little cylinders from beginning till the end of our, you know, limits. So basically, if we integrate pi times y squared times dx, okay, between the limits of this point and that point, it will, it will add together the volumes of each of these cylinders from the beginning to the end of our limits. And we would find the volume of the whole of this shape all the way through. Okay, so that's what we're going to do with this part here. Okay, we're going to do exactly that with this part here. So we have here, this is 2, this is 6, this is 9, which is like the, vo the, the radius of this. Okay, so I'm going to find the volume of this thing when it's rotated around the y-axis and take it away from the volume of the whole thing, which would be the whole cylinder, and that will give us the volume of the, the region we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to say it's basically the volume when you're rotating is pi times y squared times dx okay because so, we're only considering a thin little strip a thin little strip so this would be your y value from there to there this would be your dx so if you rotate it around you'll end up with pi y squared dx as the volume of that cylinder but between the limits of two and six so what i'm going to do is because pi is a constant i'll write that outside i'll have pi times y squared dx between the limits of two and six between 2 and 6. Okay, so I've got to take the y, which is the equation. I've got to square that, uh, multiply, and then I've got to integrate that between 2 and 6 and find the value of that and multiply it by pi. That will be the volume of this part rotated around. Take that away from the volume of the whole cylinder that we formed. That will be the volume of this R region when it's rotated around the x-axis, and that should give us our answer. So we have 9 squared, which is 81, 81 times 4, 4 eighths of 32, so it's 324 pi. Okay, 324 pi minus pi times, now this is between the limits of 6 and 2. Now y squared is when I square all of this, so I have 81 over, now this is, remember, to the power of 5 over 4. So you have 9, um, you have 2x minus 3 to the power of 5 over 4. Okay, so you have, I'll just... 2x minus 3 to the power 5 over 4 squared. If you square uh, something to the power 5 over 4, you multiply it by 2. So you end up with 5 over 2. That's 5 over 2. Okay, because I'll just show you here in case you're not so clear on that. So you have 9 over 2x minus 3 to the power of 5 over 4, all squared. So 9 squared is 81. And 2x minus 3 to the power of 5 over 4 squared, you have to multiply 5 over 4 by 2. That gives you 5 over 2. So you end up with 2x minus 3 to the power of 5 over 2. That's how we got that, in case you weren't clear. On that. So that's where we got that from. Now, um, we can simplify this a little bit before integrating it. So we have 324 pi minus pi times, and we have the limits of 6 and 2. Um, in fact, I can take out the 81. That will make it a bit easier. Okay, so I have minus 81 pi and you'll have 2x minus 3 to the power of minus 5 over 2 and this is sorry i forgot the dx here don't forget the dx okay that's has to be there as well okay so 2x minus 3 to the power of minus 5 over 2 integrated with respect to x between the limits of 2 and 6 and you sub and 81 pi times that and taking away from 324 pi that will give us our answer so we have 324 pi minus 81 pi times now i can integrate this to integrate this i add one to the power and i divide by the new power and then i also um then i also uh, divide by the differential of what's inside the function this is like the reverse of the chain rule what you can see is this is multiplied by something which is which is basically one and the in differential of what's inside the function is also one, so you can use reverse of the chain rule here. So I can just add one to the power, so I end up with 2x minus 3 to the power of minus 5 over 2 plus 1 is minus 3 over 2, and then that's divided by the new power, which is, um, well, it's divided by the reciprocal of the new power, okay, which is 
minus 2 over 3 times and then you also uh, multiply the denominator oh, sorry divided by the new power we're talking about which is minus 3 over 2 and you multiply by the differential what's in the function inside the function which is 2 okay so it's you add 1 to the power divide by the new power which is minus 3 over 2 and then you multiply the denominator by the differential what's inside so you end up with this and you have to use this with the limits between 6 and 2 okay now so we got 324 pi minus 81 pi times let's simplify this these cancel out okay so we end up with here um you're gonna have 2x minus 3 to the power of minus 3 over 2 divided by negative 3 okay because the 2 is cancelled between the limits of 6 and 2 okay and this was this is going to be 324 pi minus now this cancel with that gives you plus actually because minus and minus is plus and you've got 27 uh, um yeah 20 27 pi and here you're going to have um 2x minus 3 or we can we can write this as 1 over 2x minus 3 1 over 2x minus 3 um, to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, and 6 and 2. Now we can put the values of this, these in and finish off the question. So you have 324 pi plus 27 pi. And now we're going to put in these values. You have 1 over 2 times 6 is 12. 12 minus 3 is 9. So you have 9 to the power of 3 over 2 minus, And you have 1 over... 2 times 2 is 4 minus 3 is 1. So 1 to the power of 3 over 2. Okay, so that's 324 pi plus 27 pi times... Now, 1 over 9 to the power of 3 over 2. So this is the square root of 9, which is 3. 3 squared is 27. 1 over 27 minus 1 over 1, which is 27 over 27. Okay, so you end up with... That's 324 pi plus 27 pi times that's going to give you minus 26 over 27 okay when you subtract those you get minus 26 over 27 okay so the 27 cancels with the 27 so you have 324 pi minus 26 pi so 324 pi minus 26 pi which gives you 298 pi um this is like cubed units because it's, it's volume and there we have the answer to our question okay 298 pi units cubed this becomes a minus because this is a minus 26 times pi which is a minus 26 pi then you subtract them okay so there's the answer to this question question number two from june 2021 p4 international a level other questions from this particular paper can be found at the end of the video by clicking on the you know square or the link that appears over here other questions about volumes um from p4 maybe i'll have a separate playlist for volumes of revolution you can find it in this playlist over here uh, you can subscribe to the channel by clicking on this link other papers from p4 uh, another paper from p4 you might be able to find if you want to by clicking on the card that appears and also you will find links to my other p1 p2 p3 s1 m1 and also igcse material in the description of the video thank you for watching and see you soon